But look, I mean, I mean, I know this is something that everyone keeps talking about. Sure. Fuel, the queues, all that is not there. But at the same time, people on the ground, the ordinary people are saying that, no, we are not feeling that change. If you go into bankruptcy, coming out of it is painful. And that process is what we are seeing. Mm -hmm. That's why I said people are basically going through some hard times. But what was there 28 months ago, that they were not able to see what was there for the next day. No one trusts any Sri Lankan government because somebody comes in today, they do something. Someone comes in tomorrow, they might bring in constitutional change and change everything. The situation that exists that we have too much free, free things that we give, everything for nothing. And finally, there is no free lunches or dinners anymore. You uh, uh, were very close to Lasanta Vikramatunga. You come for his uh, memorial every year as well. Uh, and there are allegations against Rajapakshas when it comes to, I mean, maybe there's no substantive evidence, but still there are allegations uh, against Rajapakshas when it comes to his murder. Uh, what is happening? I mean, that process now, we don't hear anything in 2015. There was a lot being said by Ranil Vikram. I don't yeah. think there's any interference. Yeah. It is the professionals that are supposed to do this. Yeah. Don't do it and they just point a finger at the politician thinking they are the only ones who are going to deliver it. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another episode of On Fire here on Daily Mirror. I'm Isfaran Ratnam. The debt restructuring process uh, is, I guess, the biggest topic uh, here in Sri Lanka. Um, we've seen uh, uh, the bilateral creditors agreeing to restructure Sri Lanka's debt. Uh, an agreement has been signed. Uh, and we also see uh, the private creditors also coming to an agreement. So with me on the program today is former finance minister, and of course, uh, one of those uh, selected among the best uh, finance ministers in Asia, and the uh, assistant secretary uh, of the United National Party. Am I correct? National yeah? secretary. The national secretary of the United National Party, and of course, you know who it is. Uh, it's uh, Ravi Khanonaika. Welcome Hi, to sir. the program. Thank you. Um, so um, as an economist, uh, as the former finance minister, um, what is your thought on the whole de uh, the debt restructuring uh, process? Because there's a lot of criticism, whether uh, you know that process was done right, whether it's really good for the country. Some say you know if they come to power that they would rethink it. What is your point of view? It's fun. Firstly, I guess 28 months ago, you wouldn't have even dreamt that there would have been a situation such as this. If you put a switch, you didn't have electricity. Mm -hmm. You go onto the roads, you didn't have vehicles because of lack of diesel, petrol. You go in and have gas uh, shortages that were there. Schools were closed. Ports and airports were not functional. But today, things have changed because there was a daring situation, change of uh, presidency. And then you had a, a, a more concerted effort in order to get financial discipline and in order to get the country back into play. But look, I mean, I mean, I know this is something that everyone keeps talking about. Sure. Fuel, the queues, all that is not there. But at the same time, the people on the ground, the ordinary people are saying that, no, we are not feeling that change. There are no queues, yes, but we don't have three meals a day. We are not earning enough. Uh, would this process help uh, address that as well? That's in the long why run? I'm coming to the point, Isfaran, because this was not the president who took it down the train. It was the previous administration that decided that it goes bankrupt. And with the bankruptcy, you have very limited options. If you go into bankruptcy, coming out of it is painful. And that process is what we are seeing through. Mm -hmm. That's why I said people are basically going through some hard times. But what was there 28 months ago, that they were not able to see what was there for the next day. But today, at least you are able to have that breath of fresh air coming in. Mm -hmm. While I admit that it is difficult. Now, in that process, you have got to go through very tough, rigid ex examination through IMF because once you go into bankruptcy, coming out is with the help of the IMF. Now, they do see Sri Lanka as a delinquent or 
uh, people that have basically agreed to disagree mm -hmm. 16 times. So first going to IMF was in 1965. Since then, it was 17 times they have gone in. So they don't believe that Sri Lanka will walk the talk. Mm -hmm. So when you use bankruptcy, they thought this is the best time to get the real, uh, push the country against the wall and get a situation that they will never get back into this uh, bankruptcy ever again. But what guarantee is there? I mean, like you said, walking the talk is something that, you know, our governments have had this issue. No yes. one trusts any Sri Lankan government because somebody comes in today, they do something, someone comes in tomorrow, they might bring in constitutional change and change everything. That's exactly what I'm saying, that consistency is, for, yeah. is what is required. Yeah. So when you don't, we have gone 17 times or 16 times before and relegated. I must say the last time, 16, we honoured it almost virtually to the 95% of that. But still, the situation that exists that we have too much free, free things that we give, everything mm -hmm. for nothing, and finally, there is no free lunches or dinners anymore. Yeah. So this is where basically the country had to reposition itself, financially disciplined. And today you see, or at least just in the night, the international sovereign bondholders, which was 12.5 billion of a hundred billion dollar loan uh, debt, uh, basically agreed. So finally, you have the bilaterals, multilaterals, and the commercial borrowing, which was 37.1 billion and the ISP, which was 12.5 billion, and the domestic debt, which was 52 billion, makes up to the 100 billion. Mm -hmm. So as of now, 100% have agreed that the government the official have put forward a worthwhile, creditworthy payment plan. So effectively, up to yesterday, people could have said there is one element, the international sovereign bond didn't yeah. agree, but with the agreement, now I guess it's done a deal or done and dusted. Yeah. But then is, is there a guarantee that we can actually repay because this money is something that we eventually have to pay back? How are we going to do this? Is there a well, plan that... Now that is, that is where you, the cash flows have to take place. Yeah. Before the bankruptcy, we had about 22 billion in imports and roughly about 18 billion in exports. But today, our exports are totaling around 13 billion. And your imports, which was 22, 23, is down to about 18. Then you have got the remittances coming in, which is six, seven billion, and the tourism brings yields in a balance of payments favorableness. Yeah. But your question that you ask, is this the best that could have been done? In the contents in, in the context of the uh, bankruptcy and coming out of it quickly, I think that has been a fairly gigantic step. But if you ask whether it has covered all the problems together, well, I could say there could have been better understanding or more human approach mm -hmm. as to how this could have been done. But the officials tend to sway into the IMF and the white skin phobia takes place. Yeah. And as if something is trusted upon is accepted without giving a, a good run. So we basically agreed to everything that the IMF has said just well, to get the money sort of. Well, it is easy to say that mm -hmm. after everything is over, yeah. but people when it's in delinquency, yeah you have to come out with it as soon as possible. Yeah. So if you prevaricate on trying to get a deal, yeah. you may get something slightly better, but lose out because the time factor that has taken place. But, uh, you know, Sajid Premadasa in Parliament, I think it was in Parliament, was saying that, um, that the IMF, uh, during the talks that they have had with him, that they have said that, look, if there is a change in government, they are willing to renegotiate certain aspects of the agreement. So if they are willing to renegotiate it later, surely they can renegotiate it even well, now. I, I would like, to, I mean, they should open out and say what the things are, because there's right. nothing. This is not something where the ministers or the president brings it from home. It is taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying if and when, which is only a conjecture, which yeah. you can basically look at, tell what it is, because I don't think the opposition couldn't even see to that the country was going into bankruptcy. So can they come out of it? when they didn't know that they were going into it. So my feeling is, it's easy to talk as armchair critics when you're in opposition. But you've got to come out of it, it will have come out. And what are you, up to 65, 70% till the problem was solved? Nobody spoke about it. Yeah. Once they're coming out of it, and they're able to breathe a sigh of relief, then only various things come in. So I know you my, were... my feeling is that uh, uh, you would basically have to give something solid. Yeah. And I don't think that area there's anything more that you can add on. Yeah. I mean, you can certainly try to ease off the difficulties that are there, but that is with the uh, influction of time, where you have earned the revenue and you have come through a certain point, and then you can basically 
uh, do certain things. But you need but to meet certain targets as first. For overall, the fiscal space, right. I don't think you can do anything more. There's no point taxing the same people who are paying taxes. Right. You are going to broaden the tax uh, base. Yeah. That's what you've got to do. Are you, uh, uh, I mean, I know you've been critical uh, of uh, the central bank, the way they handle matters, monetary policy wise as well. Uh, do you see changes coming in on that end as well? Well, I have been critical for one thing. I like to see a country that is on the move, not to be dictated by uh, inflationary trending and trying to curtail uh, cash uh, things that are there and trying to prevent, you know, what I'm basically trying to say is you flush out the surplus cash and try to have a contraction. Rather, I would say improve the supply side. Mm. And that will help to increase the um, uh, the production base and let that be a positive multiplier to the country. So that would mean it's a, it's a go-go mentality. Right. I mean, just try money supply, tightening money supply is the most uh, old and archaic type of way of trying to control uh, inflation. Right. So you believe that right now the policies that they're taking are probably in line? I mean, should there be independence as well? But that is another factor that they're saying. Okay, well, Central Bank needs to be independent from the government. How independent it is, they got independence and one of the first things they did was to that's get their salary increase. Now, I mean, okay, that's uh, in passing. Mm -hmm. But I would basically say, if Central Bank has been doing what they have been doing for the last 70 years, this country won't be in the mess they are. Right. They blame the politician when it comes to something. But they are the effective authority that handles the um, uh, monetary side. Right. So if they are supply, I mean, they have been relatively, um, uh, I would say, independent in their activities, and their display of professionalism has been far away from normal accepted norms. Right. Um, I just want to deviate a bit from the monetary or the economy issues and just discuss uh, politics. Uh, because that again is also something that is now grabbing uh, at Center least social stage. media attention <laughs> with uh, some of the people who are joining the UNP. Uh, I mean, you have certain SLPP individuals who are now joining the UNP and these are people that, you know, Ranil Vikramasinghe when he was Prime Minister in 2015 um, assured justice, accountability, you know, investigations over crimes that maybe some of them committed, uh, allegations against them. And now these people who have been accused are now part of either the UNP or part of the government. Uh, is that uh, good for the UNP as, you know, one of the oldest parties and a party that was well respected in 2015? Well, as of the UNP, we are looking at all uh, people who are like-minded. Mm -hmm. And that is not uh, expansion of the UNP. While we are certainly trying to do expand the UMP, we are trying to make it a heterogeneous alliance where all common thinking people can get together and pool their resources and make a better tomorrow for the country. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, every single person is being looked at, but we are looking at the like minded people. Yeah. And I guess that is a positive element. Well, look, there. I mean, you uh, are very close to Lasantha Vikramatunga. You come for his uh, memorial every year as well. Uh, and there are allegations against Rajapakshas when it comes to, I mean, maybe there's no substantive evidence, but still there are allegations uh, against Rajapakshas when it comes to his murder. Uh, what is happening? I mean, that process now we don't hear anything in 2015. There was a lot being said by Ranil Vikramasinghe. Well, now it's like. If you look at that particular thing, well, the officers that were handling it in yeah. the CID and all, they basically spoke and they're in an different party today. Mm. Why didn't they action this? I mean, yeah. was there any concealment that was there? So if so, why did they but not But then they that? were targeted by Gotabaya Rajapaksha's well, administration for investigating well, these murders. Not, I mean, that, that fell two years yeah. thereafter. Yeah. Still things can go on. I mean, Lasanthas have been reawakened because, I mean, certainly we also, as a very close friend of Lasanthas, we would like to see. But the, the process has got stalled very badly. Yeah. And but then this government can we, this government, you don't need those two individuals who joined the NJVP for that. It was the case. So I don't yeah. think there's any interference. Yeah. It is the professionals that are supposed to do this. Yeah. Don't do it and they just point a finger at the politician thinking they are the only ones who are going to deliver it. Yeah. What about the profession that have got to do? Right. They're not done it. No, but can't a political decision also be taken? Those those professionals are right now, they're 
they've joined a political party, so they are not involved in this. Yeah, but so, the so process they, can they are, continue. They track record is right. They don't do their job, right? And then they come out and they try to point the finger and say political, making yeah. the change yeah. as if they were suppressing Harris. Now you could see where these problems are. I must say, in Ta, there's a breakdown politically and in bureaucratic terms. We need to reawaken ourselves. And this is where this country has to head into much more professional bureaucratic system. It's not only bureaucrats, even the politicians. Mm -hmm. And this change is what people are looking at. I mean, talk doesn't get you anywhere. But professional approach is what you've got to do. Is, is to Ranil Vikramasinghe, do you think that Ranil Vikramasinghe is the person who can bring the sort of change that you feel is required now? Yes, and if you look at who is available, who has the acumen, the, the knowledge that is there to get it moving, who can connect Sri Lanka to the world, who can basically have that sagacity to take the knowledge that he has and resurrect from the bankruptcy that it is, and then also give the political leadership that there is no anarchists or there is no fundamentally, you know, extremists that come in. I guess the Sinhal is the Tamils, the Muslim, Burgers and the Malays must live in a Sri Lankan identity. And there's no better person I can see except for President uh, Vikram Singh. So you feel that he would definitely uh, yeah, look, contest he, as well? When there was a opportunity, when there was a uh, situation, a crisis. A, a crisis and a chaos that was there, then there was a necessity to find the next president. When the opportunity was there for the present people who are in opposition, who are critical and vocal, yeah. where were they? Or they are, the challenge was there, they ran away from the challenge. Then it was left for Ranil Vikram Singh, uh, with his experience and knowledge, to resurrect this out. I mean, they are, I mean it may not be 100% correct, but at least we are 95% there. Mm -hmm. There has to be certain correction, rectification, by all means. But when, when the place is on fire, you need people to come and douse that fire, not to keep adding on more kerosene oil to that fire. Yeah. This is what is happening. Has the UNP closed, closed its doors on those people who left, people like now who are in the SJB? No, I wouldn't. We, we, I mean, we never told them to show that the gate was open for them to leave. Right. Neither the same way it is not locked for anybody to come in. Okay. And we believe that their own conviction will bring them where they feel what they have done has not only uh, temporarily uh, had a defeat for the party, but it will never be able to be annihilated. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure what they have gone there, they see that that side of the hill has been far worse than what it was on this side. So before too long, you'll see them re-emerging and bring it back to the place where the professionalism, where the collective uh, um, uh, teamship all will be put together and take it to better tomorrow. But I believe at the same thing, while UMP is being uh, resurgence is there, we'd also love to see common thinking political parties all working together towards the common agenda. Yeah, the president keeps inviting uh, all the other political parties to work with him, but we don't see that sort of response uh, or well, acceptance of his invitation. Well, the acceptance needs to have a proper time. Yeah. And that is just brewing before too long. Before too long. And what is the future uh, of Ravi Kanwar in politics? Well, I would basically think however professionally we can do what has been done in the past will be re-looked at and re-emerge. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure sometimes the absence will show sometimes the necessity. You know, what was told then has been proven otherwise. Yeah. And when you come out of it, then only people realize, you know, that media sometimes does damage which is well beyond You're referring to the bonds, yeah, yeah of I mean, I mean, there is no such thing. It is only a hype that was made in the media. Mm -hmm. And now you see, I mean, if that is being an error, then what are going on now is 10 times different. So it's a policy approach. And it was taken like, like a uh, bring a uh, storm in a teacup. Right. Well, it was good uh, talking to you, Rakan Naika. Thank you for being with us on the program. Thank you very um, much. And I guess all of us, must look at that, it's not that whether you can develop this country or not, but whether there's a will to develop this country or not. And together, let's make that difference. Thank you. Thanks. And that's all the time we have for you for On Fire for this week. Till next time, stay safe.